Please join me in the call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now. We gather together in the sacred space as friends, neighbors, visitors, seekers, and singers, and family and faith. We congregate in this space that echoes with the prayers and praise of many decades. To ask our own questions and seek answers. Please join me in prayer. Come, O Creator, O immensity of love, O eternity of mercy, come and be with us, and in us, and beside us, and over us. Be as hands upon us, and fashion us for shining. Be as warmth within us, and fire us for caring. Be as strength beside us, and shape our lives for healing. Abide in our prayers, the spoken and the unspoken, and make your word true in our flesh. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Please join together in singing, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Exchange a greeting of peace as Christ greets us. Peace be with you. I'd like to invite um, any children to come forward, children of any age, or is somebody hiding back there? Children. I've got
got something to show you. <laughs> There you go. That goes down farther than I thought. <laughs> Have a seat. So I brought some small things and one big thing. Have any of you been to the beach? Oh, she's got her Cape Cod shirt on. Way to go. You went to Cape Cod? Where did you go? Great. Well, I brought something from the beach with me. What do you think it is? Yes, shells. I have a really good friend. Her name is Sarah Jane. And she loves the ocean. She walks along the beach and she picks up all kinds of shells. I'll let you hold some of them because I don't need them off. She comes back from the beach with baskets full of shells. Ooh, that's a pretty one, speckled one. Baskets full of shells. And her husband says, what are you going to do with all those? Most of them are broken, he points out. And she says, oh, I'll use them for crafts or put them in the garden. Why would you bring broken shells home, he asks. I would just throw them back in the ocean or leave them on the beach. I've got a broken shell here. Maybe you can spot a flaw on one of your shells there. This one's got a pretty big hole and it's chipped. This one's pretty nice, but it's got a little unexpected spot on it. But Sarah Jane picks them up anyway, and she loves them. And you know what? She reminds me of Jesus because he never looked for perfect followers. In fact, there are no perfect followers. And often, he chose people that were not, well, they were not healthy all the time. They weren't able to run, or they couldn't see, or they couldn't hear, or they couldn't talk. Jesus picked up broken people the way my friend picks up broken shells. And sometimes he healed them. Sometimes he um, told them, go and praise God and share the good news. But he always welcomed them into the kingdom of God. I have one more shell here. It's pretty big. It's in the compartment all by itself. It's really quite big. And it's broken. It's got its top knocked off. And a couple of the other spikes here are dented too. But because it is broken, it's able to be used in a really special way. In Hawaii, I have family who lives in Hawaii, and the Hawaiians used to use this kind of shell to call people to come and worship or come for a meeting of some sort. The broken shell was able to bring people together. If it wasn't broken, couldn't have done that. Jesus can use us, whether we're broken in big ways, or maybe just a little chipped. Jesus loves us and can use us. Thanks be to God. You know what, let me get my other shells out here. I can't give that away, but let me get my other ones out. If you like the shell you have, you can keep it. These are my other two. You can trade up if you want to. There will have to be a time limit, though. <laughs> oh. Another thing you can do with this, it can make more than one sound if you put your hand inside. It's kind of like a French horn.
good morning. Let us join together in a prayer of confession, which simply means admitting that we are broken, all of us. Let's join together in prayer. O oh, Holy One, we are your children, created in your image, but often we wander from your ways. It is right and good to admit our mistakes our failures, our open rebellion, our sins. What we have done and left undone, Lord, have mercy. For our harsh words and unforgiving hearts, Christ, have mercy. For our pride, our greed, our foolish ways, Lord, Hear the good news. How we love to hang on to the past. We get all tied up remembering, keeping count, bearing grudges, blaming, and shaming. The good news is that Christ came to set us free so that we may have life and hope. Praise God for a new day and freedom in Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life, for the much needed rain today, for the plants growing in gardens, for the green of spring and summer. We pray for places around the world where there is either too much rain and severe flooding, or there is severe drought. Lord, bless this earth. Heal it. Be with those who are thirsty. Be with those who have lost their homes in floods. Be with farmers in this country and around the world. Bless them with good crops this year. We pray, Lord, for a country and city alike, for our nation and for all around the world. We pray for peace, for leaders in government to seek the things that make for peace and for justice, for leaders in business to make wise decisions about resources, about what is done with waste, about fair prices and fair wages. Be with leaders in religion, that they also may seek peace and justice and show us all mercy. Be with those who are near and dear to us, those who are traveling, those who are awaiting medical diagnosis, those who are being treated, those who are grieving. Hear our prayers, Lord, as we lift up names, joys, and concerns. We pray this and all things in the name of Jesus and as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for us. we prepare to hear our scripture reading for this morning, please join me in the prayer of illumination. We listen for your voice, O God. Prepare us to hear it. We expect your word. Help us to accept it. We await your wisdom. Teach us to understand it. We seek your truth. Show us how to find it. We ask for your guidance. Strengthen us to follow it. We want to know your will. Free us to do it. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Genesis 3, 8 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Let us pray. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> We've already talked a little bit about the beach and collecting shells, but I'm going to continue in what I call my beach sermon. I'm using the word beach as an acronym so that each letter, B-E-A, not the beach tree, B-E-A-C-H, will stand for a word beginning with B for blame. Did you hear what those first humans were doing? Adam and his partner, at this point, Eve does not have the name Eve. That comes later on in the chapter. So Adam and his partner Eve were caught in the act of disobedience. They ate from a tree that had been forbidden. God said in the garden, you can eat whatever you want to eat except for the tree in the middle of the garden don't even touch it and of course that set up desire we can't have something that's what we think about all the time they gave in they had a meal of that forbidden fruit and then they realized their eyes were opened, they realized they were naked. Hey, we don't have fur or feathers like all the other creatures in the garden. So they sewed together some fig leaves and they hid themselves from their creator. There is no hiding from God. Where are you, Adam? Says God, I'm hiding. Hiding. Yeah, we found out we were naked, so we're hiding. How? Where? Who? Who told you you were naked? Did you eat from that tree I told you not to eat from? Adam is all ready for that question. He says, but God, the woman you gave me, he blames God first. And then the woman you gave me, she gave me the fruit and I ate it. You what? I ate it. A little bit louder, Adam. I ate the fruit. God looks at the woman. Well, what is it that you have done? She blames the serpent. The serpent made me do it. The serpent tricked me and I ate the fruit. Reminds me of the comedian Flip Wilson. Some of you may remember him. He and his character Geraldine would always do some outrageous act and then say quite innocently, the devil made me do it. Adam and Eve pull that same excuse. They blame the serpent. They blame Eve. They even blame God. It seems to be human nature to look around for someone to blame when things go wrong. All of these first chapters of Genesis are part of our origin story, our beginnings, our attempt to explain why things are the way they are. Why do we have many more weeds in our garden than fruits and vegetables? We have to work so hard to get a nice crop of tomatoes, but boy, those weeds just multiply on their own. Take it back to the garden. Adam and Eve sinned. Now we have weeds. The origin story. Why is life so difficult? How did we get into this mess? Even, why do we have to die? 
our origin stories attempt to explain these deep questions. Hubert Humphrey, the former vice president, says, to err is human. To blame someone else is politics. It's human nature to blame. Taylor Swift, a more contemporary person, sings, don't blame me, love made me do it. Love made me crazy. Don't blame me. B is for blame. The next letter in this beach sermon is E. E for explanation, which we kind of already touched on. E could also be for excuse. Sometimes there really is not a need for blame if we take a deep breath, step back, look around for a logical explanation for what happened. Once the pressure is off, there's less need to blame. Explaining why we seem so tense and grouchy after a terrible day, explaining that we are really worried about something, maybe global warming and what the future holds for our children and grandchildren, explaining our emotions, explaining our situation, instead of just blaming the Democrats or the Republicans. E for explanation can lead, a, can lead us to acknowledge our role in a situation and maybe make some helpful changes. The next word in beach the next letter in Beach is A for accountability. We do make choices in our lives. Adam made the choice to accept what Eve offered him. You know, Adam, you could have said no. He made the choice. We all have choices. Sometimes so many choices we feel overwhelmed. And so we just let things happen but we do have freedom to make decisions, wise or foolish. We are accountable for our actions, and we will have to face the rewards and the consequences, or as this story puts it, the blessings and the curses. We can blame God, as Adam tried to do. We can blame our parents, and their genetic code or their mistreatment of us. We can blame our teachers, our government. We can even blame the devil. But to be honest, we in the end must acknowledge our own actions and admit our mistakes and be accountable. Which brings me to the next letter C for confession. You had a prayer of confession this morning, and probably most Sundays you have a prayer of confession, acknowledging you're not perfect. You made bad choices. You made foolish decisions. It can be a relief to confess, to admit, to have a weight lifted, a burden unloaded. Perhaps there are times when confession seems forced. I grew up in the Roman Catholic Church and I remember going to my first confession. I was six years old. Six! What could I have done? I confess sometimes I just made up sins. Probably more interesting than anything I ever did. But true confession can be a relief. We admit and we allow ourselves to be forgiven. No one is perfect. Everyone is broken. But for those who cannot admit brokenness, 
they often try to blame and shame others. You may remember, uh, maybe as a kid, you were told that if you point the finger at someone, there are three more fingers pointing back at you. It's hard to pass the blame. It's natural to pass the blame. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That brings me to our final letter in beach, H. Let me review. B is for blame. E, explanation. A, accountability. C, confession. H, hope. We are not without hope. Even though we all mess up, sometimes by accident, sometimes we because we don't know any better. Sometimes because we just choose the wrong path. We give in to temptation. There is hope. As, let's see if I have that here, as the reader was reading from Genesis, the, the serpent who supposedly caused all of this bad stuff is cursed, but the curse is simply, you're gonna go around on your belly all of your life, and I will put hatred between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head. You will strike his heel. That's a foreshadowing of the offspring of the woman, Mary. It's a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. Even in the garden with those first humans, God was there to help them face the consequences of their choices and to give them hope. Grace was there from the very beginning. St. Paul puts it this way. In Romans 5, Adam was a pattern of the one to come. And in 1 Corinthians, as in Adam, we all die. So in Christ, all will be made alive. There is hope from that first human story in the garden. The next time you start to say, ah, she talked me into it. Remember Adam, remember Eve, remember Jesus. The next time you hear, you've got nobody to blame but yourself, remember that if Jesus does not condemn us, we dare not condemn ourselves. Blaming has no positive effect, and it can easily lead to hopelessness. The Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh says this, when you plant lettuce, if it doesn't grow well, you don't blame the lettuce. Although you might blame Peter Rabbit. You look for reasons the lettuce is not doing well. It may need fertilizer or more water or less sun, but you never blame the lettuce. Yet if we have problems with our friends or family, we blame the other person. Instead, think of how to take care of them so they will grow well like the lettuce. Blaming has no positive effect at all. When we resort to blame or when we receive blame, we can look honestly at the situation and learn from it. We can, if appropriate, apologize. We can investigate, we can try to understand. We can admit that everyone sins, but realize that's not a license to sin. We 
can do our best. Especially in times of blame, we can remember the hope that we have in the grace of God, in the understanding, the love, the forgiveness, and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. As in Adam, all die. So in Christ, all will be made alive. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in singing God of grace and God of glory. seated. Since COVID, we have not been passing the plate, but we are grateful for your continued support, and we invite you to donate online, or as you leave, there's an offering box by the door there. Let us think with generous hearts about all that God has given us and how we may give in return.
Holy One, receive and bless these gifts, a portion of all that you have first given to us. Receive and bless our lives as well, so that all that we say and do may bring glory to your holy name. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn. Now as we go forth, may wisdom be in your mouth and in your speaking. May Christ be in your heart and in your thinking. May the one who created you in the beginning be with you as your journey on the way of truth and life. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. <laughs>